Everyone, I hope everyone had a great summer. And as we all know, the SEC media days are kind of the kickoff of college football. I'd like to start off, first of all, and welcome Coach Bielma in the fatherhood. So uh, congratulations to him. But it's truly an honor and privilege to be up here today representing the University of Tennessee, uh, fifth SEC media day. And uh, very proud of the progress that we've made uh, in our football program in four years. And just, I was thinking on the plane ride over here, it was just four and a half years ago where our program was facing the potential uh, APR penalty. And now that's a thing of the past with the 972, second year in a row that will graduate 100% of our seniors in our program. Uh, we have 67 players on this year's football team that has a 3.0 or above. And on uh, the last two bowl wins, we've had 26 college graduates uh, participate in those bowl games. And then on the field, uh, we're very proud of the fact that uh, it's very, very difficult to win in the Southeastern Conference. And we're one of only three programs that have won nine games uh, two years in a row. Uh, we've been very fortunate to have three straight bowl victories, first time in 20 years uh, in our great program's uh, history and tradition but there's so much more out there. Uh, there's so much more out there to be accomplished, and uh, we've only started, and uh, that's what I like about this year's football team, uh, is they're very, very driven, uh, very, very motivated. Uh, the three individuals here today, I think, are very symbolic of our football program and the evolution and development of our program over four years. Uh, it starts with Jay Sean Robertson, offensive lineman for us, uh, Jay Sean was recruited as a defensive lineman, spent a week in training camp as a defensive lineman and because of the limited number of offensive linemen that we had at that time in our program, we asked him to, to move over and he started every game as a true freshman and ended up being a, a freshman All-American. Emmanuel Mosley, I'm being kind of him, was 145 pounds at the time. He was an option quarterback and uh, won a state championship, came two times to, uh, to our camps in the summer to earn a scholarship. And the way he's grown in our football program and developed his body uh, is truly remarkable. And then Kendall Vickers, I was joking with him on the plane flying over here. Uh, he was a 250, I'm sorry, 215 pound defensive end wide receiver. And I remember in practice watching him catch passes and now uh, he's developed himself into what I feel is one of the best defensive tackles uh, in our conference. It's been a very, very productive offseason for us, uh, probably the most competitive offseason that we've had. And uh, a lot of that attribute goes, uh, is attributed to our players, uh, to our leadership, but also to the addition of Rock Gullickson and the strength and conditioning area. Rock has been a 17-year veteran in the National Football League and he's really kind of changed the dynamics in that room along with uh, the entire strength and conditioning staff. Uh, we have to replace some very, very good football players. Uh, we have six drafted players in the first four rounds of the National Football League draft this past year. Uh, that hasn't been done in Tennessee since uh, in 15 years. So again, that's how far we've come in our program. We have five new coaches uh, in our football family. As we all know, Larry Scott assumes the, the offensive coordinator position. And the way I looked at it is Larry had a, a year of an interview process and very excited about him and what he brings uh, to the table from that position. Mike Canales is now the quarterback coach. Been very fortunate to have known Mike for over 20 years. We go uh, with him and, and do football. Uh, when he was at South Florida in every convention, we'd actually take the mirror off the bathroom wall and draw, and draw plays. And so he's an individual that I've always admired. I think he's the best uh, developer of quarterbacks in the country. And then Walt Wells is our new offensive line coach, Tennessee native. And he's, brought so much to the table there, and then Kevin Beard. Uh, everyone's kind of seen the YouTube videos with the click clack and the, uh, and the cleats that he wears for practice and does the drills with the kids. And then uh, defensively, Charlton Warren is our defensive backs coach, and it's a very, very unusual situation. He spent 10 years in the United States military and the Air Force. Uh, now he's coaching college football, and he's been a great uh, mentor and, and a great football coach to, to our players and has really helped in the back end of our defense. And then lastly, the defensive line, 
uh, position is uh, was filled with Brady Hope. And uh, Brady brings a whole other dynamic. He's been a conference coach of the year in three different leagues. And the exciting thing about this coaching staff is we have three former head coaches. And any time you can have head coaches on your staff, I think it's extremely healthy. It's been a great help for me, but it also helps mentor uh, your younger coaches on your staff as well as we want all coaches on our staff to have the goal of being a head football coach one day. In terms of this year, we have to start fast. Uh, we have three games in 13 days. So our health, the turnaround is going to be paramount. And uh, we're excited to be able to have the opportunity to start the season in Atlanta. And the Chick-fil-A kickoff game against a very, very good opponent would be a great challenge for us. So I'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Coach. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We have uh, Bridget, Chase, and Joseph. Uh, we'll get a microphone to you again. You'll give your name and affiliation and stand when you ask your question. Questions for Coach? We'll start up here on the left, second row, Bob. Uh, hey, Coach Bob. Or just a Democrat is that obviously Josh Dobbs did a lot of stuff for you guys for a long time. What's it going to be like replacing him? What's, what's your quarterback situation uh, going into fall camp? Sure. Well, again, you're replacing a, a, an individual who really leaves a legacy at the University of Tennessee and Joshua Dobbs and everything that he brought to, to uh, the quarterback position. Uh, when he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers, he was the highest drafted quarterback. Uh, since Peyton Manning uh, in our program's history, so he's brought a lot. But I'm really, really excited about the quarterbacks that we have in, in our program. And I think the competition at that position has really elevated the level of play of everyone else around them. Uh, you know, you have two kind of distinct, different personalities. You have uh, a young individual in Jared Garantano who's very energetic, uh, very demonstrative, uh, very passionate and uh, very, very talented. And then Quinn Dormady is a coach's son who's kind of been in our football program. And, and so a uh, little bit different in terms of personality-wise, but these two individuals are very, very, very talented. And the great thing about these two individuals, we talked to our, our young football team about this all spring, is compete and don't compare. And they've been able to do that, but they also have a mutual respect towards each other that they're still helping each other out, and it's been great to see. So I think it's a great issue to have. Um, we will not name a starting quarterback until the time is right. I can't tell you what that is. That will be decided, uh, obviously, on the field when we start training camp. Okay, Coach, we'll go all the way in the back in the center section. Hey, Coach. Steve Moulton, 97 Southern Zone from Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, in terms of replacing leaders, both on offense and defensive side of the football, how is that something that you've really uh, combated at, because of Joshua Dobbs and, of course, Derek Barnett on the defensive side of the football? How have you gone about replacing those big leaders on your team? Well, as we know, leadership is the key to any successful football team, and, and we do have to replace some individuals there. But uh, that's the exciting thing about this football team is it's really been leadership by the entire team. It started with our 17 seniors. They've done a great job of really educating our younger players about the standards and the expectations within our football program. And this is probably the best collective leadership uh, that we've had in our football program today. And it gets back to the details and accountability and the toughness by which we've spoken about ever since uh, we started our off-season program in January. So that part of it from a leadership perspective uh, has been very, very good to see in terms of it's been more of a collective, more of a collaborative group effort than it's been in the past. Coach, we'll stay over here on the right on the aisle. Chase Goodred with NFL.com. Coach, I, I know last year Pate Manning said he didn't have any interest in, in, in being a coach at the college level, but I know you talked to him. What indications have, has he given you, if any, that maybe at some point down the road he'd like to be a bigger part of, of the program in, in some capacity or another? Well, Peyton and I are in constant dialogue. We're in constant communication. And I think right now he's he's enjoying retirement. And I know he's looking forward to hosting the ESPYs coming up. But uh, he's an individual that you know really tried to really involve him in our program as much as he can because he has many things going on right now. And uh, we had an opportunity to bring him back about a month ago, 
and be able to see our quarterbacks and talk with them and just get around our football team, which obviously is extremely healthy for everyone. But again, I know he has plans down the road. He'll be successful in anything that he chooses to do. But you know, we try to involve him as much in our program as possible. Coach will go in the center aisle, about midway back. Still better sporting news. Um, last year you had that season with big swings, a lot of emotional finishes, and like you said, you got the nine wins. So, uh, given the expectations you had last year versus this year, what did you guys learn as co from a coaching standpoint? Well, you always step back and you, you know you do a thorough examination of your season. What could you have done better? What did you do well? How can you continue to grow and elevate? And I think the thing we have as a program is uh, you can never have enough depth and everything is about competitive depth and being what we call nine strong all nine position groups and i think it was a great illustration to some of our younger players at the time that you are one snap away and no matter who's out there the, the names may change but the expectations never change in being ready for your opportunity when that opportunity presents itself and i think one of the great illustrations is john kelly john kelly's an individual who waited his opportunity in our program and then when his opportunity came, obviously he made the most of it. But I think it's that competitive depth uh, that we talk about and every player understanding their role and understanding uh, their job description and being ready for that opportunity when that opportunity comes. Coach, we'll go here to our right, second row. Vince Ferrar, sports radio at WML in Knoxville. Coach, can you see a scenario where you play two quarterbacks into the season until that plays out when the time is right and or would you really prefer to pick a guy and go with it? Well I think playing time is, is earned and so both players earn the right to play. We'll play both quarterbacks. I've been in the systems where we've been able to do that. And really Quentin and Jarrett's skill sets are very similar to each other. And I think we have an offense that really can play to the skill sets of the quarterback and all the players around. So again, if, if both players earn the right to play, they'll both play. Uh, you know, again, it's it's how it's going to play itself out because two, these two individuals are very, very capable and very good football players. It's a good problem to have. Okay, we'll have a question over here in the south. We can get a microphone over to him. Come across. Come right on up here. There we go. Right on. There we go. Coach uh, Drew Yarn, ESPN 977 Zone Radio in Huntsville, Alabama. Derek Barnett is obviously a great player and special one in Tennessee and what he accomplished. But now you have uh, to replace him on the defensive line. Talk about that unit as a whole and also Kyle Phillips, the guy I think is a young player who could uh, take that next step this season. Yes, we're looking forward to getting Kyle Phillips back. Uh, again, he's an individual who, you know, has been offset by injuries, but he's back to his full health right now. He's one of those individuals that uh, has also grown into a leadership role. Uh, and it's been great to, he's been very boisterous, which has been great. And again, he has all the skill set. It's just him remaining healthy, so we're excited. He's actually in Vietnam right now. Uh, we have a ball leaders class right now, and, and himself and Jack Jones are over there, and I think it's going to be great in terms of a leadership standpoint, what they bring to our team uh, when, when they return. But Jonathan Combos, an individual that uh, he played defensive end, and then when we had the rash of injuries up front, he was forced to play defensive tackle and play inside. We moved him back outside his natural position. And he's had as good of an offseason as anybody. He's about 265 pounds right now. And he's one of those individuals who's working out uh, day and night. So we're excited about him. And Daryl Taylor is another young man that we thought took tremendous strides uh, this offseason and in his spring football. He's really, uh, you know, really committed himself to the weight room and the strength and conditioning area. And he don't even look like the same player right now. So. Again, I see those individuals really stepping up. And, you know, the chemistry and that continuity that we have in the defensive line room is, is one of the stronger positions that we have in terms of accountability. I love sitting in their meetings. 
uh, and hearing them hold each other accountable in the standard and, and the expectations that it takes to play defensive line. So I think that's been one of our stronger units from a leadership standpoint. Now it's just, again, regaining our health. Shy Tunnels, a young man, I know we talked about defensive end, but the defensive tackle position that started running now, uh, doing change of direction drills. So we anticipate him being ready for August camp. Uh, he'll be limited in some facets of his game, but to be able to have him back and be running now is very, very encouraging. Okay, Coach, we'll go down here on the right aisle in the very back on the TV set. Coach, Boomer Dangle, Fox Sports, Knoxville. He talked about some of the new, talked about some of the new coaches. <laughs> he talked about some of the new coaches uh, that have come in, and especially the head coach experience that comes with the staff. How do you view your personal role to manage some of the guys who have done the managing in the past? Well, I'll tell you what, first of all, you're gonna surround yourself with, with great people, great people of character, great teachers, great mentors. And the great thing is I've known these individuals for a long period of time. We always talk about being a better version of you every day. And I want individuals that have sat in that chair that understand, A, the dynamics of what I'm going through, but also, hey, if there's a better way, a better way to look at things, you have a better way of doing things, I'm open. We, we're all in it together and want to be the best in everything that we do. And they're also, they provided a great sounding board, you know, to really bounce ideas off. Hey, what do you think? How did you handle this situation? Would you do it any differently? Uh, but all three of these individuals, I, I think they respect the position. So they understand everything that goes into it. I'll give you an example. It's 4th of July and my phone is going off and it's pretty hope. And he's talking about the dynamics of our staff and how great our staff is and how this is going to be a great year and how he loves working with the kids and everything we're doing. And for me, that's very comforting. And that's the type of resources that these individuals bring to the table. They, they coach at the highest level. Uh, they understand the day-to-day -day operations and you know, I have a great respect for them and, and I know that they respect everything we've done in our program, so they've been great additions. Coach. Coach, Coach Julian Council, 125 game Nashville. Considering the expectations going last season, in fact, you guys were top 10 team and only finished 9-4 and 22nd overall, do you view last season as a disappointment? I don't view it as a disappointment. Uh, the way I view it is, you know, we didn't accomplish everything that we set ourselves out to. Uh, and again, our goal every year is to win a, a championship and compete to win a championship. Uh, so was it a disappointment? No, did we not accomplish some of the things we set out to do? Absolutely. We have to learn from the things uh, that went wrong that we could have done better. But I think all you have to do is look at it. It's, it's difficult to win, and it's difficult to win championships. And I think this league really exemplifies that. Uh, but I'm still proud of the way our team responded. And I told our football team this, is the lessons you learned from last year, the resolve, the resiliency are going to serve you for many years down the road in life. And that football team went through a lot of things. And, you know, I know we started off 5-0, and I believe our first five opponents were divisional champions, and I made a comment going towards the tail end of our season that the, the back half of our season would be much more challenging than the front half of our season. Everyone kind of looked at me like, what are you talking about? But I knew where we're at as a program. You know, we're still, we were still needing that competitive depth across the board. We had some position groups where we couldn't afford to have injuries. But again, this is a, a results-oriented business, uh, and we fell short of our goals. But I don't like to use the term disappointment because when you still look at it, it's hard to win in this conference. And only three teams have won nine games, and the University of Tennessee is one of those. Other questions for Coach? Raise your hand, and we'll get a microphone. We've got another one up here on the front. Second row, Bob. Uh, hey, Bob Holding and Ernest up there. Okay, so this, this is a two-parter, if that's okay. One is you, you alluded to you guys obviously raised the level of program um, since you inherited it. What do you think you got to do to take that next step, you know, to, to get to Atlanta? And also, you, you're the only team that used to ask to play Alabama every year. I know that's a traditional rivalry, but do you ever think about maybe it might be nice not to have to play Alabama every year? <laughs> well, first of all, taking taking the next step, I think it's. 
you first of all sustain success. And when we set off four years ago of building this program, we knew it wasn't going to be a quick fix. And we wanted to build something that would be, the foundation would be set for many, many years. And that foundation is set for success. I think a lot of times, too, when you're building a football program, your program goes through evolutions or different stages from being able to compete to having a competitive depth, but also your players and everyone in your program understanding now, when we first came to Tennessee, we were part of a lot of homecoming games. And what they, you know, we talked about as a football program, you're now, everyone's going to play their best game. You're going to get everyone's A game. There are no off weeks in this conference. So that, that takes a maturity level. That takes an understanding of getting yourself, preparing yourself to play your best game week in and week out. And uh, so I think that's been part of our evolution of our program too. But I think maintaining the consistency, maintaining the expectations, and we want more, and we expect more. I know our fans want more, and that's the great thing of coaching at Tennessee are those expectations in terms of Alabama. Uh, obviously, that's a great, great rivalry. That game means so many, uh, means so many things to so many people. Uh, so again, we take that game very, very seriously and uh, have a lot of respect for what Coach Saban has built at Alabama and what they've done, but uh, it's also a great rivalry game, and uh, so that game means a lot to us. Coach will go to the back of the center section. Coach, uh, Steve Moulton again, 97.7 The Zone from Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, you mentioned that your, your head coaches that are now part of your staff, but there's another head coach who's also now part and Coach Phil Fulmer. I'm wondering how he has been, uh, how, what's his role with, with you? Do you consult with Coach Fulmer? All the time. Uh, you know what, that's a friendship that I value. And, uh, you know, he's been a mentor to me. He's been a sounding board to me. And this has been over time. This started from year one. Uh, reached out to him, had him come by, uh, welcomed him back in the program, had him speak to our team. And, you know, you have a great resource right here. He's, he's a college football Hall of Famer. Uh, he understands the dynamics of Tennessee. He understands everything associated with our institution. Uh, and I consider him a great friend, a great mentor and it's great to have him back. And like I told him, Coach, just I want you to practice. Come to practice. I want you to sit in meetings. Anything you feel, it's your program. You help build this football program. And that's you know the expectation that we have with all of our former head coaches and all of our former players. They're the ones that built this program through their hard work, their sweat equity. So anytime you can have a resource like Coach Fulmer, uh, I want him around as much as possible. All right, we'll have a final call for questions for Coach Jones. If anybody has a question, please raise your hand. All right, Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you.